Thank you for joining me at Ryan Dome. Today we will be going over Unity 3D. Uh, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on it, on step by step, on how to create a game in Unity. But for right now, this first tutorial is just going to be an introduction to tutorial on how to somewhat get started. So if you open up Unity, um, we're just going to all start off together. We're going to go File, New Project. And we're gonna I'm gonna name this project tutorial and I'll do tutorial one because I already had a tutorial before and yeah so create project do you want to save I'm not gonna save okay you should get a welcome to unity picture pop-up uh, you can go ahead and click show on startup or I like to leave it just in case I want some like video tutorials or unity answers it's very helpful so this is the main aspect center this is where all the magic happens right here so let me show you there's five main um, windows that we're gonna talk about real quick this down here your project this is the asset folder the asset folder contains every single bit of anything in your game when it comes to audio clips when it comes to graphics when it comes to your player when it comes to the level that your player will be in everything will be in here scripts you name it it's all gonna be in here so when you file when you run your game and finally complete your game there's gonna be a folder called assets and everything's gonna be in there so it's really up to you to keep it how organized you want to keep it. So we'll, we'll, we'll go over more about this later. This is the scene window. This is really where all the magic happens. So in the scene level, there's three um, main controls that you can move around in here. Number one, you can right click on your mouse and it brings up an eye with like a little Illuminati Tetris block thing. That is the WASD key. If you go ahead and press that, you can pan around and look around, zoom in. You can pretty much see everything in your 3D space. Another thing you can do is if you have a middle click scroll wheel, or just a scroll wheel, you can scroll in and out so you can zoom. And if you hold that down, you get a Mickey glove and you can pan back and forth. All right. So those are the main ways you can look around in your scene view. This is where the level takes place. This is where your player is, where the main ground is, if you want buildings in here. Everything takes place in this world. So this would be like one level. If you made this a level, this would be one level. Unless, yeah, this would be one level. Over here, you can see we have a camera right in the center of our screen. Over here, this is the third page that I want to show you. This is the hierarchy, and this is the main camera. The main camera allows you to um, see from where you would see if you were playing the game. So this is the physical what you see when you're playing the game. And you can go ahead and click on this, and this brings us to our last and probably the most important inspector window. Um, this, Yeah, the inspector window. This gives all the properties of whatever you selected in your scene. So the position, the rotation, the scale of the camera, um, what it can see, what it can't see, its perspective and field of view, um, the clipping panes, how far it can see, how near it can see, uh, the depth, and all this other stuff. HDR, if you want it to be an HD game. GUI flares, so if you want like sun flares and light flares and audio listeners, so you can have sound. The inspector has every uh, every property of anything that you selected in your game. So I'm going to set this back to 60. All right, now you're like, okay, this is great and all, but I want to put stuff in my scene. So that's what we're going to be doing next. If you go up here to the top left or wherever you have your game object component and window stuff, if you go to game object, 3D object, cube, you can spawn in a cube. And you can see I can pan around and look at it. 
and I can move it. So now if I go to my game window, I can see exactly what I'm going to see in my game. So right now, if I played my game, I would see a little shadow of a cube, and that would be it. So, what can we do with this cube? Um, we can do kind of a lot with it. Well, let's find out what we can do with it. The inspector window. It's blank right now, so if I go select my cube, you can select it this way, or you can select it this way. If you get your cube, you can see, oh, I can see its position in the world. I can see its rotation, so I can rotate it around. I can see, oh, it's got a cube mesh filter, which allows it to be seen. It's got a box collider, so things can collide with it. It has a mesh renderer. If I turn this off, you can see it's just the cube with no texture. So this could be like an invisible wall or a boundary in a game. Um, we see that it can cast a shadow, receive shadow, and it's got a texture to it. So let's go ahead and say, hey, we want to change the color of this to a different color. If we go down to our assets folder, and right click we can create material and let's name this cube 1 dash 1 I like to be more neat if you click on that material over here in the inspector window you can see like all the settings for any type of texture you want I'm just gonna use a diffuse texture and do a simple lime green we'll do lime green and done that's all I want to do if you want to you can select a texture custom from your uh, computer so if you found a picture of a fox you could put a fox on there y y you get the point so I have this material but how do I put it on the box it's really simple you take it drag let go you're done now you have a, a uh, lime green box so if we go to play our game, you can notice there's something there. It looks like a box. It could just be a weird square, weird green, dark green thing. And that is because we don't have any light in our scene. So if you go to game object, lighting, you can see the four main lights that are used in Unity 3D. There's an area light, a spotlight, a point light and a directional light. The directional light is like sunlight, so we're going to be using that. Go ahead and click on that, and you will see that your sun is right here. You can go ahead and move that up so it's more like a sun above the ground here, uh, if I can. Um, oh, geez, now it's far away. Okay. Well, just ignore it. Well, alright, this is a good example, actually. So our sun is like, who knows where it is, it's super far away. If I go to position, I can just change all these to zero, 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 and boom, it's like right next to me. So we can leave our sun there. It, so a directional light works in a way where it doesn't have to be above you to shine light, it just shines light anywhere. So now if I was to go to play my game, you could see, oh, I now see a box here. I can see the sides and see the way the light's hitting it. It's looking a little better. Um, so we can go to our next, I don't know, our next thing where we're going to change this box to change colors. So maybe our game will be box changer. So let's just pull this and more so we have a better like view on it per se all right let's just get it just right here so here we have our box in our scene and we're gonna go ahead and make it so you can click a button and it changes the texture color of it so over here on the left hand side go ahead and right click and go to UI and let's put in a button alright so 
You might be a little confused on where the button is. The button is really big way over here. So, over in your left hand side hierarchy, you've noticed that it's created a canvas. That's this big thing right here. Okay. Go ahead and click on your canvas. Go to scene space overlay and go to world space. Okay. Um just a second. I believe that worked. Okay, no it did not. Hang on. Scene overlay. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So go ahead and just leave it where it is. You can go back to your cube and double click on it to zoom back in on it. So even though your button's way over here, because we have it set to scene space overlay, it will allow it to stay in the scene of your window. So if you go back to your cube, um, we have its color set to green, right? So if we go on over to the big button that we want to press, you know, this button right here, this button's going to change the color of it. If we click on our button, and on this on click list is empty, go ahead and click on this. Um, grab your cube, hold down, and drag it all the way over to this uh, game object area. Drop it in, so now it should say cube. Add a new function, uh, mesh renderer. Wait, I believe that's it. Let me just look. Mesh render. And we're looking for something that'll change its mesh color. Let's see here. M material, material. That might be it. So, go to material, material. And it says, oh, we want a new material. So let's go back to our assets folder create new material. We'll name it cube2 and we'll say when this is clicked, oh this is textures, we don't want textures. When this is clicked turn it to blue. So let's go back to our button and drag it in. So it should be working now. So if I hit play and this button, if I press it, the box turns blue pretty cool but maybe we want something a little bit different than that so let's go back to our cube and let's see what can we make it do that would be a little bit more interesting let's make it rotate so the way to do that is we need an animation so go to window and animator and something should pop up like this I personally don't like the animator here, so I take this little tab and I drag it down here, here. So I have tabs here. This is the animator. Um, if we click on this, just a second. Oh, my bad. You can go ahead and close tab on this. It's not the animator we need. We need the animation. So click on animation. And drag this window down here this is what you need so you should see lines here so how does the animator work we're gonna go ahead and click on our cube and see this little red record button we're gonna hit record and we're gonna name the new animation cube spin and save so this right here if I hit play that is one second right there. And I think we want our cube to rotate for a little bit more than a second so I'm gonna use the scroll wheel and scroll out a little bit so this is two seconds so we'll go we'll, we'll say like five seconds so I'll take this and scroll it all the way to five seconds and add a or go to zero add keyframes so we're going to go add curve transform and we only are wanting it to rotate so we'll add a rotation so here you can see oh it's not really rotating because 
it's saying from start to finish it's rotating the same place that it was. We're going to select these and drag them all the way to five minutes. So now we have five minutes of stay in the same place animation, which is not so great. I'm going to go to one minute and I'm going to take my rotator tool and I'm going to click on the green line and I'm just going to rotate it like 90 degrees or just an estimate. Then I'm going to go another uh, one minute, so two. I'm going to rotate it a little bit more. And I'm going to go to three minutes. I'm going to rotate it a little bit more. I'm going to go to four minutes. I'm going to rotate it all the way around like so. So now when we play, it will spin. And between four and five, it goes the opposite way. So it goes zzz, which is because we did that copy and paste thing. Um, and for right now, it probably just looks cool doing that. Um, I'm just saying, this it's going to be kind of a little difficult to fix it. So, yeah. Um, let me... So, when you're done with your animation or whatever you wanted to do, go ahead and click the pause, and you're done. Go back to project, and you'll see it added new things. Cube spin and cube. If you click on your cube, you can now see that it has an animation uh, property to it. So, when you play your game, your cube will rotate around, and it will do the animation that you played. So it's just doing its thing, and if I press this button, it changes it to blue. Pretty cool. Um, so let's go over what we covered a little bit. We covered how to put in game object 3D, how to put in like um, textures and put in materials and 3D default objects. We learned how to make a button system so that it can change the color of the cube to blue. Oh, and I didn't go over this real quick. If you click on button, you can change the color of the button. So it starts off lime green, and we can make it so it starts off lime green, and when you press color, it changes it to blue. So when you press the button, it turns it to blue. And if you click on the little arrow key next to the button over here and click on text, you can change, change color, or change box, right? Change box. So now when you play your game, it says change box, and you click on it. That's strange. Okay, so you see how when I'm clicking it, it's slightly turning blue, but it's not holding it. I don't actually think there's a way to make it so it stays blue. Let me just play around with it a little bit. This is all a little new to me. It came out in 4.6. Nope, that didn't change it. Highlighted color. Um, okay, well now when we highlight over it, it changes it to blue. But it doesn't keep the c box color blue. And maybe I'll go over a little bit how to do that. It's a little complicated, I believe. Um, we can make the fade duration a little bit longer. So it, like, fades in, I guess. I don't know. Wait, I'm just curious. If I make that, like, 51 seconds. Okay, don't make it 51 seconds. I don't know what that did. Alright, we'll just scroll that back over here. Alright, so that's our game so far. We can name it, I don't know, Cube Changer. I mean, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Anywho, thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video and found it at all somewhat a little bit helpful, please leave a like. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.